Okay, and welcome back. Hour number three. It's Monday, and that means it's time for our Fukushima report. We're going to do our best to bring you up to date this hour on what's going on. And let me tell you, if you have not been able to listen on Mondays, and if you've not been able to follow along at the top center column in the news section at Rents, you have been missing the biggest story in known recorded human history. Uh, it has been swept under the rug and out the door by the mainstream media. Uh, the nuclear power industry has tremendous clout. Uh, they don't mess around. This is not a joke. Uh, the bottom line is Fukushima has not slowed down at all, releasing deadly over 200 radionuclides into the Pacific Ocean for almost, well, it's over four and a half years. It's coming up on five this March. Nothing, nothing is getting better. It's only getting worse. I can't understand how uh, really those buildings have stood up for as long as they have. It's only a matter of time before they eventually do begin to fall in, fall over, cave in, and all the rest of it. Uh, but meanwhile, we have this non-stop, um, it, it's like a river. It's the North Pacific Current. Imagine a river in the ocean. It's moving about 10 to 12 knots, and it is coming over from right off the coast of eastern Japan, Fukushima. And it is carrying with it at 10 to 12 knots, 12 miles, this is called 12 miles an hour, uh, the radiation that we're talking about. It comes across, and off the coast of Washington State, it kind of splits, half of it or thereabout goes north, to Alaska, up the British Columbia coast, into the Gulf of Alaska, where it goes round and around, and like a toilet with no out, out flush, it just, it just stays there. The rest of it goes down the rest of the Pacific coast, all the way to Baja, and then it turns and heads back across the ocean, going awfully near Hawaii on the way back. So it's a really a horrible situation. Uh, Dana Dernford has done an awful lot to help us understand how this radiation is impacting uh, the life along the, uh, the ocean front in British Columbia, uh, in Canada, and now along the West Coast as we watch the same sorts of things happening down here. It is a tragedy beyond measure. Uh, you are all at risk. This is not a joke. It is piling up very heavily and densely off the Oregon-Washington borders in the ocean, and it's coming on shore. So there we are. Dana, how are you? Are you there? I am, Jeff. Thank you. You've yes. had a very tough, uh, tough last uh, four or five days. Uh, I don't want to go into it and belabor it, sure. but I would just direct everyone to my homepage at the enormous banner at the top of the homepage, which tells the story of Dana Durnford. And all Dana has done is made five expeditions, uh, m the majority of them in a 21-foot zodiac with a, uh, a wooden shell built over it for, uh, for housing in uh, awfully rough seas. He's risked his life over and over again to take thousands and thousands of photos uh, and video. Uh, incredible. I don't know how many hours of video you have, but a ton. And he's put it all up on his website, thenuclearproctologist.org. Please take a look. And uh, there are issues involved, which we're not going to spend a lot of time on for obvious reasons right now. But uh, what's the situation here along the West Coast in the U.S. as far as you know, Dana? Yeah, that's, you know, I appreciate that banner so much. Jeff, uh, I'm glad that, that gave me hope in every sense of the word, and I can't, I couldn't possibly express what it means to, to know that the support that you sent my way, how much that changed the game for me and changed the game for everybody, I'm and that glad. that is what we needed, right? We, we we desperately needed someone like yourself who carries that much kind of weight and conviction and credit and morals to come out and stand alongside us and you've done it over and over and over and once again unfortunately you have to rise to that occasion again and so but everybody got to understand that this is dirt it's game on and that they're rolling this out and that the only way to get me out there was to eviscerate everything i got there and try to take me down a few notches and slowly start to roll this out 
And so they're not trying to avoid it anymore. They got my name up in mainstream media. Uh -huh. And so people will read it and go to, the, to yell at me, and then they understand that they can't yell at me. Um, and so I'm seeing that now, and I'm getting so many phone calls from so many people. How nice. Every, everybody's trying. Everybody's trying their best. And, uh, you know, we don't know if that'll, that, if that'll matter because they're not playing by any rules. They got no rules. And so they oh, they're answerable to nobody. They have no rules. No. Yeah. No, they have no rules. They just made this up. They put me in a box in the courthouse, and you couldn't hear the judge, and the judge couldn't hear me. Really? So how, how can that be good? Really? Uh, yeah, you literally, I, I, literally totally. couldn't hear each other. Right, and they got 12 restrictions on me, and so I'm, gonna, I'm chipping away at that down to the courthouse tomorrow uh -huh. and start trying to get some of these lifted or parts of them lifted and just keep chipping away at it. And, and the reality of it is is that you know, I could beat them in court uh, with, a, with a, a nickel and dime lawyer any day of the week. There's no doubt about this. Uh, anybody can beat them in court any time at all. And I beat them um, in the public sphere, and now that documentation has gone from my site, but I beat them in the public sphere repeatedly, and uh -huh. that's what caused me to finally get so frustrated to say something so outlandish, but yet uh, it, it has no context. And because it happened a while back, no one's ever got hurt and sensed in. And I've made videos every day that I got an opportunity to ever sense it. And so, you know, like full episodes, 13 videos have to be removed just in case I did mention somebody's name. And, I mean, this is ridiculous that I might, I can't criticize somebody on the Internet when it comes to Fukushima, but I can I can go out and criticize somebody for anything else. Well, yeah, but they, they, meanwhile, they can criticize you and your work. And they are. <laughs> and so they're after bludgeoning me in the media I'm I'm literally being, literally being flogged, uh, publicly flogged throughout Canada, right. and that my family and friends have reached out to me in concern that, you know, maybe there's something happened to me where I had a breakdown or maybe something like that. And just for the record, for everybody out there, I'm I'm nowhere uh, near suicidal. I'll never be anywhere near suicidal. That's not in my genes. I'm a 100% let's get it on type of guy till the end of time. And that's what my whole history has been. And so there's right. no, there's no, uh, and there's a lot of speculation out there that I'm, I'm totally depressed and despondent. And I am, but it's not that kind of, it's just that they've done that to me. And now we have to go and raise money from people who have given so much, right? And put so much time and energy to get me to finish these expeditions. Right. And that's been assaulted with gibberish, um, yeah. And yeah, go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. No, 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 go. You go. So, yeah. like, when you put me in a courtroom and the first thing the prosecutor says is, Your Honor, his page is nothing but, he doesn't mention nuclear proctologists. He says Facebook. Now, I don't have a Facebook page. And then he talks about YouTube. And, but, I mean, it's, he doesn't know nothing about the case. He took a warrant from a, a court in Victoria. Now, Victoria. One of the institutions that I'm taking a lot with is in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. That's UVic, and they're half half of that is a law school. So here I am in the same community as a law school looking for justice is the most ludicrous thing imaginable. And so I have one lawyer lined up uh, that's looking really good. There's four other ones. They're looking good too. And the one that I want to get has uh, nine uh, Supreme Court cases under his belt. And so he's already proven his point. He's already reached the pinnacle of his career, so to speak. And I think he's in, uh, like the rest of them are in a lot of shock after going over my material and coming to the realization that this is not uh, what he said or they said. This is my goodness, the ocean is dead. And this guy here has the documentations and is is the desperate attempt to throttle him in once. It seems like in a panic. It seems like. They're, they're totally disarray. But on the other sense, why would they mention my name in public? Uh, because anybody who comes and finds me or anybody that knows me knows automatically that that can't be possible. Right. And what, you know? Right. So, so, yeah. It's a very confusing time for me. I'm under just an incredible amount of strain. The phone doesn't stop ringing. I'm under constant threats. And I feel like every time I hear a car door closing that they're coming to take me again. And that I feel that 
um, like I'm powerless to do anything about it. And that's not, and when that's not, doesn't seem right, but I'll fight to the last second, but they're going to make it up. They got me charged with something that's irrelevant, something that's out of context. They charged me based upon a one hour video back in July, mm -hmm. where there's a salacious audio clip taken out of it without the video, without the pictures of a one hour. And then they typed that out. And then so the judge never got to hear the clip, let alone the, uh, hear that it was an entire video. But I can't even prove that because I can't hear them. They can't hear me. And so they finally, I forced them to bring me out so that I can <laughs> be heard. And the judge never listened, lift her head a single time. And that, you know, I said to the prosecutor, I lashed out at him, which was wrong, obviously. But I said, I don't got a Facebook, so get your facts straight next time. And then... You know, like the rest was fine. I have no issues with that. The police were extraordinary. And I, I understand that they knew that this what they were doing was wrong. They didn't even show up in the courtroom. And that the jailers were extraordinarily considerate with me. And that I had, uh, I was sweating all night because they turned the heat on bust on me all night. And that they never took my dignity away from me at all. It was only the prosecutor and the belligerence of the court system itself, but not the people who came. I don't think they, they left me in my home. The warrant came out the same time the Globe and Mail came out with an article about academics being harassed. And I can't go into detail, obviously. But at the same time, they issued the warrant. That was on Sunday uh, mm -hmm. afternoon. Mm -hmm. And the police got the warrant right away. And they decided not to come and get me because they knew who I was. They knew I wasn't a threat. They, they knew that this was just the industry itself and that it didn't make any sense and that the restrictions on it were meant to take away all of my freedoms and that the option was to uh -huh. stay in jail uh -huh. and I couldn't do it, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so the reality of it is, there, what happened was I pulled 300 videos. There was no context left on my site at that stage. Anybody who came to my site that day could not have no concept of what I was talking about because it was disarray. Mm -hmm. And so I, I compiled a 19-minute video, which you graciously and thank goodnessly featured and features and continue to features and has right in, in an absolutely prestigious, unimaginable spot on your page. As um, And that was designed to give context to everything, that, that the thousands of hours of documentation that I just pulled off my site. And so... Here I am, I'm left with talking to a lawyer and the only video that makes any context for him, but not really, is the video that I posted a few days ago because everything else is in such disarray. And that when I got home from jail, I had four strikes on my account. And so it was very difficult to appeal to people that this was egregious crimes were committed against me. And, you know, it's laudable that I talked to CBC Radio. I've done two interviews. They asked me, one was in a supermarket, and I, I, I hold up the whole line for 15 to 20 minutes. And I answered every question. They called me back a few hours later. I answered every question, and uh, completely honestly. And they didn't even quote me or play a sound clip. But yet the opposing one, they gave him all the airtime they wanted. They and didn't that, play any of your no, interviews? No, and all he said was I wasn't a scientist. But yet I have 14,000 hours underwater, more than either one of the two people I'm accused of. And that I looked at the species oh, where they yeah. went out and took water samples. I don't need to tell you. But for the people out there that, you know, this, uh, they've taken this to a new level. They're going to bury me somewhere if they get the opportunity. And that we're right now we're in a fight for the facts. And the Jeff lawyers was, you've talked to sound like they have been all of a sudden brought into reality and are shocked. Yeah, exactly. It stuns them. They didn't know and, it because their no, government has right. been they lying to them. They didn't know who I was. They couldn't know without knowing who, who I got to laugh when I say that one. It's impossible to really be knowledgeable about Fukushima without being just flooded with my stuff. It's impossible, see? Correct. And so when they didn't know who I was or nothing about me, yeah, well, yeah. That, then that, that worries me because that means to, mm -hmm. how do I get them up? You to have to educate them. them uh, and it's hard. I, I'm sure if anybody could do it, it'd be you, but it takes time. It's uh, it does, strenuous. Yeah. Uh, you've got to they walk them waiting. through it. You've got to sense how they're, they're taking it. It's hard. Right under 
Uh, Dana's banner at the top of my home page. You look under, under news, uh, you will see it. It's right up there at the top. Second banner. Look at the pictures. Look under the text below his, uh, his picture and the two others, the before and after. I've added a new link. See the British Columbia coast before and after Fukushima. Yeah. Shocking photos. It's heartbreaking. Look at the pictures, ladies and gentlemen. I actually can't look at it very often. Those I don't. I don't uh, like to look at them either. I understand. Yeah, it freak me out. I have to. I looked at. I, I. Everybody has to look at them, but it's it's not cool. It, it, it's really something, you know. In the one sense, we got to try to make the good of everything make something good out of this and that's what we're doing of course here tonight and what we continue to do is we continue to seek solutions we can continue to seek a conversation not a debate anymore because we've already documented the coast and i got i'm going to tell you there's a story on urchins might be the next might be dying of sea star wasting i'm looking for it on my computer here but it's i don't want to bring up a page that we we cut into this here with the bandwidth but anyway i was just reading a story from the smithsonian from a few months ago because mm -hmm. i was on the ocean when that one came out and i never read it and so i was reading this story and they had based their study up on 200 miles of the coastline now me and terry originally done 200 kilometers of our coastline we uh, went to nine places and mm -hmm. done samples now what smithsonian was talking about was researchers uh done four samples along a 200-mile coastline of America. And because of those four samples, not knowing like me and Terry done, and not the 50,000 mo uh, miles that I've done after, certainly, but just based upon those uh, four samples, they came out and said that the sea urchins might disappear with the same disease as the sea star wasting disease. Oh. A staggering, that's a staggering oh. statement that's, based that's upon... True just four samples yeah. and then well and then under that model then everything i say is justifiable see correct yeah everything that you said and anybody else has said about the actual implications and and, the and they made that projection on just four sample areas wow yeah just four sample areas they said it's gone throughout the coastline is what we might see happening it's very scary looking and i mean but when i read it was based up on just four samples from four different areas in a 200 mile stretch mm -hmm. i was like well compared to what we done dan and the hounds of fukushima and everybody else that supported us um yeah not cool at all that means unfortunately that and there's another headline there that i never got to was about a couple of thousand birds had abandoned their eggs in florida this summer and so as i read through that last night the story was actually that all the species, not just one species, but all the species abandoned their birds and that they their had eggs. their eggs. They Sorry, really eggs. did. Oh, yeah. well, no, wait, wait a minute. This is, okay, I haven't heard this. Yeah. This is right. in Florida. What part of the, of the state do you know? Do you remember? Yeah, I can bring up the headline in a few seconds. Yeah, and so all talking. the species of birds abandon their eggs and their nest this spring. That's Thousands of birds abandon eggs nest on Florida Island was the headline. Uh, and so as you go down through it, they try to, at one point they, they suggest it could be there's a lot of drug interdiction uh, traffic along that coastline. No, no, no. But then they just blow that out of the water and say, but it's highly uh, speculative and right. it's just, uh, you know, a conjecture really. And so... Thousands of birds abandon the eggs hmm. is, uh, is just another one of these headlines that we don't mm -hmm. hear about, and you have to wonder why. <laughs> Was it on the Gulf side of the state of Florida, the Gulf of Mexico side? It's uh, Seahorse Bay. I don't know where so it I'll is. tell you. Yeah. And I don't know what side it was on. And, of course, she knows the voracious appetite that I got. 150, 200 headlines a day on Fukushima. I know. I yeah, know. if somebody says Fukushima, I found it and read it. And, by the way... Your banner, I found that I must have been 30 places last night, different websites, just done a fantastic job of uh, replicating and linking directly back to you. And I just go to uh, Really, you, have right? they? Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, it was so. Just really encouraging to see that kind of. We're seeing a lot of conversation on the net. That's a trending topic. 
I typed in Dana and I got Dern for the rest of it. I was like, okay, that's probably, I haven't seen that one before. So mm. something's going on. And that. Well, their smartest move would be for them to, to uh, dismiss oh, yeah. this, leave Wrong. you alone, Wrong. and keep with their their uh, their lying can the government keeping with their lying campaign. I don't know what this new government in Canada is going to do. Any is there any indication that they may be uh, sympathetic to this and may want to reveal the truth? They um, are you talking about an inbreed? The guy who's there now. I mean, they would have elected a hockey stick at this point. They would have elected a beer bottle stopper, anything <laughs> just to get yeah. rid of Harper. Yeah. Uh, but he's firmly entrenched in the elite's private institutions. Oh, yes, schools. he is. Yeah. Yeah, and he was out doing lectures for a year and a half before he got elected, getting a quarter million dollars for saying that he's a little dirty inbreed. And <laughs> this is Canadian tradition is to go out Great. and call those people. So, so nothing Yoshi really encouraging me there. And, and put his support out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how's Yoshi doing? I haven't really heard. He's on uh, in an, an airplane right now. Uh, he'll be here next week. He oh, sends, is that right? Yeah, yeah. He he's offered his... to come to Vancouver even if they arrest him. Yeah, so no, he sends his best. How he's, good he's, that soul is. he's very concerned. Yeah. And, he uh, is. No, he's, he was definitely genuine. He's yeah. outraged. And he, he gets it. He got it. He read the story. And I didn't need to tell him anything. He said he got no. it right away. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, they're pulling the rug out from, trying to pull the rug out from underneath me. And, of course, they weren't counting on Jeff Rince and the Fukushima Hounds and <laughs> coming out and letting them have a with Pope Well, that, that homepage banner is getting looked at all over the world. Uh, oh, this. my goodness. John B. Wells this morning. So we're going to be moving out there all this week, but it looks so good. 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 All right. Well, we'll keep at it. Do look at the new link I put under the bottom of the uh, banner and the text. See the BC coast before and after Fukushima. Shocking photos. Take a look. Uh, this is an issue that is not going to go away. It's only going to become worse and worse and worse until there is absolutely nothing left. There are a couple of dozen species now out of over 6,500 that ought to be represented up and down the coast. That's it. And those are just barely hanging on. So uh, you hang on and we'll be right back with Dana in just a couple of minutes. I'm just screening these uh, before and after pictures again. And uh, take a look. Just take a look. Pictures, they, they speak for, for themselves. There's a little bit of green, looks like one, maybe two species on some of the pictures on the right, and that's it. No sea stars, no sea anemones, no nothing. Thousands of potential species should be there, and nothing there. All gone. And you know, if all the species were to disappear on the shoreline, just four million in the ocean would fill it all up again immediately. Yeah. And that on a healthy coast, you can plow in a thousand miles of coastline and in two months it will be filled completely up again. But you would never get rid of it. The next tide will be all kinds of life there. And eventually within two months it will be filled up again. Mm -hmm. Hey, that headline, urchins could be the next victims of sea star wasting disease. Okay. that First of all, sea star wasting disease is a lie. <laughs> uh, yeah, which is nonsense, of course. Uh, uh, but it's interesting that even in that article, as they said at the very end of it, but it can't be proven that a sea star wasting disease. And there's no disease. I talked to the the director of Banfield, and he tried to tell me that too. And I said, no, no, wait a second. I read the studies, and they don't name it. They, they call it a mystery pathogen, a mystery virus, rather. Or, mm -hmm. But they don't name it actually as a disease. There is no name. And so they haven't, they haven't showed a picture of it. They can show us a picture of Ebola, and <laughs> but they can't show us. No. Feeling a bit better too talking to you, Jeff, tonight. I know this is good news. No, that's good. You need you need to feel as good as you can. This look, look this this too shall pass. This is going to go uh, so. away. It will go away. Uh, your work, you see, you're just you're ahead of your time in terms of what the media has done to the people of Canada. And when the people <laughs> of Canada begin to see the reality, and you're going to get the publicity. You're yeah, going to get as much as possible from this, and they're going to notice that they've been lied to, and they're not going to like this. It's going to put pressure on, on uh, provincial, regional, local, gov all the different layers of government are going to start getting heat. 
Uh, it's too late. They have, they have caused this to escalate phenomenally. You were just yeah, puttering so along and doing your thing. We were doing our thing. And now what they've done is given you, literally, and your data and your research, front page, coast to coast, in Canada, yeah. Yeah. news coverage. You couldn't have bought that coverage. No, you couldn't, no. No, I, was, I, I always figured it would be a knock on the door and somebody over the camera and the story is broken. But I didn't know it would be a knock on the door in my pajamas and somebody got a warrant. Thank goodness it was the people that it was, though, because they were extremely... That's, I mean, they came to my really other nice door to and, I, and I had yeah. one door open and they stayed at the other door that I never use and waited for me. And, uh, you know, you couldn't ask for any better than that. It well, was just, that's, that's really nice to hear. Yeah. That, like, in other words, I was expecting the thugs to come in. They were hoping it was going to be like that. But the police must have watched my videos and realized that I wasn't a bad person at all and that I was really, I was showing the information as I talk. And that's the good side coming up is that in the near, after the 18th, I'm going to be starting the blog again by the looks of it, uh -huh. uh, but with a two-minute delay. In case I say anything, there's a lot I of things see. I can't say. I see. Yeah, and, yeah. So I got to be so careful. It's so difficult to yeah. to have a conversation. And Will not you talk be able about... to? Uh, it, it, you're going. It's going to be a painstaking progress. But go through yes. your videos and 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 find. You got to put those back up at some point, if you can. Yeah, uh, like you say, 300 videos, and so that was the context, and. Because that told the whole story and the progression, and I got better and sharper and better yeah, and good, sure. better with the technology and and the software, and I was telling the story much much story much better. Yeah, and like you know, it was it all together? But for the people who don't know any better, is that you know it's it's not our fault. We didn't do this. The industry done it. They knew what they were doing. Doctor Raymond Gill met his studies for the last thirty five years showed that. The radiation killed animals, mammals, proficiently mm -hmm. uh, within about three or four years. Mm -hmm. The massive cancers, 144 beagle dogs and puppies in one study, they were all dead within four and a half years. And the first, there was 90 of them had this cancer, 20 had that cancer, wow. the rest of them had these cancers. And this and is so low-level dosage? It was nothing compared to what we're getting. Oh, my Right, no. it's nothing. It's insignificant mm -hmm. compared to what we're after getting, and what we continue to get, and that our drinking water standards in Canada are way above anything imaginable. Well, and that's so what, the heartaches that, are coming. Yeah, that's what yeah. they did. The uh, first, the Japanese raised the so-called safe levels of exposure to a handful of radionuclides. Yes. Then the United States came along and raised our so-called safe levels of exposure. Okay way higher than theirs. Yeah. The and Obama Canada administration knew what was coming and they raised one up, was it 17 or 27,000 times higher than it had right. been. Just right. incredible. Japan originally raised it 70 times what a kid uh, would get before they would take potassium pills. But that only protects you from just one thing. But nevertheless, it, it was an omission, see? Sure. Why, why raise it during a nuclear accident? Absolutely. You know, oh my goodness. They raised it and so high it here, it was, uh, I'd laugh, but it's not funny. Uh, no, it's, it's frightening yeah. to go along the coastline. And to, to me, that's the tragedy of it, is that the country is going to tear itself apart as it finds out. You know, I've never showed before pictures before true great criticism and it's only because I don't want to cause a panic until I got all the data up on the website and had a documentary created yeah. that had context and had yeah. answers and had some solutions. Because I seen it in my friends and family's eyes when I did show it before and after in stubborn arguments. And I said, here, look at this. And I just seen the wind come out of their sails. And I can't do it until I have enough deer in place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we were... We and I just all I can really say to everybody is, have your faith in me. And on the nineteenth, I'm going to show up on the internet again. And on the nineteenth, anybody who watches my videos after that um, will get it. And because of, I'm forced to do what I had to do, and now we need to have that. We need to, we need to move. We evacuated the Tetra River. 
in the 50s, permanently, 7,500 communities, and we have to do the same thing. 7,500 communities. Right, permanently. Wow. And, I mean, that's amazing. But that's yeah. something you very hear, you rarely hear about, unless it's someone like myself. And certainly, I've never heard anybody else say it, and I've read it, and mm -hmm. I've read it repeatedly. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have to do it through all the Pacific Rim nations. They are. They're going to have, absolutely. Northern so, Hemisphere first, and then the Southern. You guys are uh, this, yeah. The West Coast of these formerly United States uh, has yet to even begin to grapple with the problem. Uh, I saw a graph, not a graph, it was a, just a, a, an animation, a representation of the Pacific Ocean and the western states of Washington, Oregon, California, Northern California. And the intensification of the radiation off Northern Oregon, Southern Washington, was so high it represented as a red, big red circle in the ocean. Huge, huge area of deadly radiation that was completely compacted into a circular form and moving right toward, like a bomb, right toward the shore. Uh, it should be on shore by now, but you never hear about it. About Hold on a minute, we'll be right back with Dana Durnford as we continue. Hey, welcome back. The losses of salmon and other large fish in the northeastern Pacific are enormous. I ran a story a couple of days. This is out of the Globe and Mail. Millions of B.C. salmon mysteriously, quote, just disappear, end quote, in troubling year. There were very poor returns on the Fraser River, where only about two million sockeye returned, far short of the more than six million predicted in the preseason forecasts. They expected six million to return. Only two showed up. Even more dramatic was the collapse of the pink salmon on the Fraser, with only about Five million fish showing up when more than 14 million had been predicted. Where are these fish going, folks? They're dying. They were coming home to spawn. They didn't show up. They die. They eat little fish, which eat bigger fish, which eat bigger fish, and they, the dose they get is enough to kill them. They're dying en masse. And uh, God help whatever eats the salmon. But this is all... All on, uh, you can all look at it at runs.com. It's all there. Millions of salmon mysteriously just disappear off the West Coast. Literally within two days, they disappeared. The whole fishing market just collapsed, crashed. These people are just thunderstruck. They don't know what to say. And what they do say, unfortunately, is the wrong thing. They start talking about virus bacteria, solar, ultraviolet light, global warming. They never say radiation. They just won't. They're doing what they're told. You don't talk about that. Doesn't happen. The Japanese know. Uh, they got a million cancers over there minimum now. They're going to kill people. They got to get rid of the Olympics in, in Tokyo. That, that just can't happen. It's time, it's time to get to the point where let's move it, just get it out of there. The Olympics of death. No thanks. Okay, Dana, so you're back in court on the 19th? Yeah, 18th. And yeah, that's a week just from to this set Wednesday, the date right? and everything. Oh, I see. Let's mm -hmm. see if they're serious, if they're still going to continue on with the charade. They could drop it then, couldn't they? They could, and like in one sense, we don't want them to drop it. In one sense, we're going to get them on the stand. Oh, now, you put I them on the stand? Oh, happening. my. That's not the idea of what they're doing. Yeah. And that's a law school. Yeah. Right? It's, so, like, I don't know what I'm <laughs> saying here, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. If, well, I can say it. If, they, if you get these people on the stand, uh, it's going to get ugly real fast. Uh, you've got the proof. Uh, it's very you know, simple. Let me get them on the stand. That's the yeah. only silver lining in this one. <laughs> yeah. I laugh every time he thinks about it because it's preposterous that they could. Uh, that's the whole problem. They can roll out lots of people that are 10 times smarter than I am. 
that can eviscerate everything I got to say in many senses with more uh, style and more eloquence and, and much more articulating. Correct. But they can't. <laughs> they just can't do it. Because no. anybody that rolls out got a history of bananas and potato chips. That's right. It's just, yeah, they can't beat me. And that's the problem. How could it's anybody... So sad. I wish how, they could. I wish how they could. could. Yeah. How could anybody talk about bananas and potato chips as <laughs> any quine, uh, kind of... Uh, of equity <laughs> with what's going on. I mean, it's 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 that's all, pathetic. That's what the university. <laughs> they got the whole education, but when they talk to the media, they say bananas, potato chips. Nobody, you know, like the people that I'm, uh, I go up against, they never have opposition when they're talking. There's never another narrative when they're, they're no, talking. No, of course not. It is. It's called propaganda. Is, yeah, they're, they're labeled as whatever. Mm -hmm. But they're never labeled as credible or they're never labeled as valid. And we have terrorist laws because the stuff is dangerous. We have the nuclear waste sites because it's dangerous. We burn billions on security because it's dangerous. We have the fear mongering in the media because the, terror, the, the, the terrorists might get some and contaminate your town. Mm -hmm. But if they release some, mm -hmm. then you know uh, it's harmless. And scientists say it's no more than you get from natural radiation every year, and blah blah blah. And it's right. like, oh my god, they're really saying stuff like that, and they do all the time. And so, what you covered in St. Louis, and what we talked about a little bit, but then the ocean, West covered Hills, it well. landfill, yeah, yeah, it never stopped. It's just we stopped talking about it, and. That'll continue to do that till the end of time. They can't clean it up. It's impossible. Well, what are they? What's what's going to happen to the the uh, the small towns and communities uh, along the BC coast who no longer will be able to make their living from the ocean? What's going to happen right. to them? Yeah, they're going to have to relocate. Well, they're going to have to run away from the ocean. Yeah, and they should be gone. You know, everybody should be gone right now. We should have been gone in the first week. Long gone. The plume came in. It crossed the Pacific Ocean. It was stretching from one side of the Pacific to the in, other. Within a week, so, correct? Yeah. And it never stopped coming out of there. We just can't see it or smell it or taste it or touch it. And, or and you know, another thing, I've said this so many times, the Japanese are burning in their cities. Almost all major cities have a municipal incinerator or several. And they're burning radio, low-level radioactive waste and it goes right up in the air and there's no outcry from the United Nations the US isn't saying anything about it it goes up in the air it either comes down or it keeps on going up in the air and then transits across the ocean that's nobody says bomb. anything it's a dirty bomb and the smoke particles from the forest fires uh, come across all the time automobile pollution and this stuff uh, you can put two million Atoms, uh, radioactive atoms, on any of those particles, you still wouldn't see the par uh, atoms. <laughs> and so, but yet that big stuff can make it over. They clean, they spend millions and millions cleaning up the tsunami debris. The coastline is maintained its temperature all year long from the warm waters from Japan, but the radiation, it can't find its way here. <laughs> I mean, I mean the, the, well, the lies will not stand the test of time. Oh, no. They're running out of time. Tick, 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 yeah. tick. They're Weird. almost out of time now. And if you go to court with this, it's over. Their You're families gonna... are going to disown them. All, all the industry. I'm not saying anybody in particular. Nudge, nudge, me. I'm just saying the whole industry has fear. The people that work there and that yeah. are, are prestigious in the communities because their right. time spent there. Yeah. And the people that propagated it out there and promoted it in the media. Has, like the Globe and Mail earlier you talked about, if you go look at type in Fukushima and go through the stories, they're almost all on uranium shares and uranium stocks. They're the most bigoted, biased, and prejudiced media to write about this imaginable. Unreal. And they're the ones who come out and try mm -hmm. to bludgeon me. Mm -hmm. And they, mm -hmm. they've done a pretty good job because I can't come out and defend myself. I can't come out and critique the story that they wrote because it could be misconstrued as me uh, breaching my probation. What do, you think, uh, what do you think the time frame on you being able to do that will be? 19th, will they, are they going to re reevaluate the uh, 12 things you're barred from doing? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't. Yeah. See, you, you can't, see, folks, Canada doesn't have our Constitution. Now, our Bill of Rights 
our freedom of speech, our First Amendment. If we lose that, we, America's gone. Uh, we had yes. better fight to the death to preserve that. We still have it. And I, I just, I, the C Canadians don't have it. I've seen, look, Arthur Topham is on trial right now for his rights to free speech in Canada to criticize a certain uh, very small but very powerful group uh, in Canada. I don't want to get Arthur in any difficulties here, but his uh, you can read on my site, Gilad Atzman, an expert witness, part one is up there right now, his testimony at the trial. This is a Canadian Supreme Court, remember. And uh, Gilad just, just did marvelously. And I, I hope the same thing uh, it comes to you. This, this is, and I hope it comes soon. I don't, I don't want to see this drug out. We'll keep doing what we do here, and Canadians are, last time I looked, allowed to listen to the program. So <laughs> we'll do what we need to do here, and you stay within uh, whatever boundaries they give you, and we'll play it, play by the rules, and uh, your day will come. And they are going to really eat crow. <laughs> I feel so much better than that talking to you, Jeff. Well, they're going to eat radioactive Trust crow. Uh, okay, hugs for you and your loved ones, my friend. I'm going to call her. Thank you. Know, you. Go to just sleep. Go to bed with a, yeah. with a clean conscience for good for the first time. Good sleep nights as well. Okay. Hugs, sleep, hugs sleep, well. Sure. sleep well. Sleep well. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. Uh, that man has carried a, an enormous load on his shoulders for such a long time, and then to be greeted with this, uh, the height of. Uh, insensitivity, cruelty, all the rest of it. I, I just, he should be hailed as a national hero because his government under Harper and this government under Obama hasn't done anything to warn the people. How many news conferences has the EPA held to inform you and I and everyone here in the Northern Hemisphere about what's going on? Zero. What did the EPA do recently? They shut down, as I wrote, 99 of about 150 EPA radiation tracking and monitoring facilities. They shut them down. So they have nothing to report, right? That's how it is. Thanks to Bob Nichols every week, uh, your week in radiation. And I'm going to put that up, I guess, tonight. Uh, crucial information. We have it for you. And we've been bringing it right along. Please do read the uh, center column and news. And on the right side is the permanent Fukushima archive. It goes all the way back. And you can take a look at that. Find almost anything you want. It's all there. All right, we'll continue. And we'll be back with you tomorrow night. We're off and running in another week. Take care. <laughs>